All right, awesome. So well, welcome everybody. So my name is Sam Slagle. Um, today we'll be doing the beginner's guide to Extempore. So I lead the uh, customer success team here. Uh, Thomas, he leads our, our marketing team. So he'll be the one monitoring uh, the chat throughout this. Um, and then I, I do have some different pause points um, where I'll pause, go into the chat and address any of the questions that come up. And um, what, what you can expect for this um, webinar is really just the basics of Extempore, right? how to create a class and assignment questions, uh, how students respond to those, and then how the grading and feedback uh, happens from there. So before I do uh, get started with the actual sharing, just a quick history on where Extempore came from and really why we created this in the first place. So we started this back in 2016, and really our goal at the time was just to help solve the logistical challenge that language educators face when doing oral assessments face-to-face. Uh, -face. So over time, uh, it's definitely expanded to more than just speaking assessments, but at its core, Extempore, it really is an assessment solution for language educators. So what we'll do to get started here is I'm just gonna hit the plus icon and we're gonna add our first class. So- All right, can we'll I launch the poll? Oh, yes. Yes, Thomas, go ahead with the poll. All right. Uh, we just want to get some feedback on just uh, everyone's familiarity with Extempore. So if you just don't mind leaving a couple question, questions first for us, uh, that'd be really helpful as we dive in. Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody. Okay, okay I got one. <laughs> Remember in the past, the polls didn't always work. There's four questions, it takes a bit. About halfway completed. Okay. So pretty much everyone's brand new, looks like. Oh, some use it weekly, there we go, about 30%. Give it like 10 more seconds. All right, we'll, uh, we'll call that good. See y'all. Show results quick and then we'll hand it back off to you. Pretty much everyone's teacher, most are brand new, kind of a mix of comfort levels. And again, a mix of, uh, well, actually most haven't had a train before. So cool. move that off and then so now back to extempore right here so we're, we're just on step one here to add our class you can have as many classes as you would like and i would really look at classes as your folders that then store all the students who have enrolled and any assessments that you've created inside of this class so we'll just name it we'll just say beginners guide to extempore and then we're going to hit next that's going to bring us to step number two uh, to begin adding our assessment. So we'll just name this. We'll say first extemporary assignment. And then I'm going to touch on each of the options going down the line here. So start time and due time, it's pretty straightforward. Do keep in mind that you can be scheduling the start time at a future date, in which case students cannot access this assignment until that date and time hits. So you're essentially proctoring it asynchronously. And then the due date right now really relates to when this assignment is considered late. So currently students can complete outside of the due date, but it will be labeled in red as late. And then in about two weeks, uh, we will be adding the ability to not accept late work, uh, which will just be a toggle option uh, within your account preferences. So I'm just gonna bump this back one day. And then for this beginner's guide, we do always recommend running at least two to five individual uh, assignments before you start launching the groups. So I will be doing more of a deep dive on the group assessments um, on the Friday webinar for the advanced users. So for individual, that's intended to really mimic kind of the one-to-one -one, uh, that you would have been doing in class or in person. Hey, hey Sam, they're saying your screen is frozen. Oh my goodness. Zoom has been doing this to me on every webinar lately. So, okay, so the solution has been for me to mute my video, stop the share, and then share again. Sometimes this takes a, 
maybe 10, 15 seconds, but this has worked in the past. Thomas, let me know uh, that is loading up. Uh, just says has started screen sharing. Okay. I don't see anything though. Give it another 10 seconds here. Um, like I said, last three or four webinars, this has seemed to happen on Zoom. I'll stop the share and try it one more time here. That popping up for you, Thomas? No, it's not, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Um, I'm just going to give it a second. This is what did fix it the last few times. Yeah, I've never run into this bug before on any of the webinars we've done. Hmm. Hmm. This is just my last few then. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Right. This is weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, short of just stopping and resharing it again, I, I'm not sure what else I can try here. Um, all right, so let me try one more. Still nothing, Thomas? Oh, there it is. There yeah. it is. Okay. All right. We're in. <laughs> <laughs> and every time this has gotten fixed, it hasn't uh, happened again. So fingers crossed uh, that is the case here. So um, and I'm not exactly sure where things did cut off. So if you missed it, all I've done here is just name our assessment, um, start time, due time. Again, start time can be scheduled in the future. Students cannot access until that date and time. Uh, for the due date, that's really when this assignment is considered late. And then we are going to stay focused on the individual type uh, for this webinar. So next would be how do we want students to be responding? If this was a speaking assignment, then audio or video would be the two options. And we generally see audio being used for more uh, practice speaking assignments because it does tend to lower uh, that speaking anxiety for the student when they're not seeing themselves on camera. But then when you are doing more of a high stakes uh, speaking assessment, that's where video comes in handy. So you know it's the right student and that they're not reading from a script. And then you also notice we do have the ability to collect text or written responses from students. And one thing to note with that is that we have disabled the ability for students to copy paste. So it does ensure anything that was collected uh, was actually typed uh, by that student. So we will keep that as audio and then we'll just show all parameters. Uh, assessment description, just letting students know what this assessment or assignment is all about. And then next would be when are students going to see their grades. So the default is immediate while I'm grading, which means as you grade each individual question, the student can review grade, feedback, and submission for that one question. So that's generally used more for practice because if it was more of a high stakes assessment, you probably don't want one student seeing their grades and feedback before others. So then that would be your reason to select manual, uh, giving you control to publish grades uh, whenever you're ready. And then if we are gonna be grading this assessment, we're gonna say yes for numeric score. That's gonna snap open the customizable rubric. And then since it looks like most of you are newer to extempore, the first time through, you will need to just create something for the rubric. And then over time, I'm sure everyone will be saving rubrics and then just recycling them uh, at the drop down here. So first time through, we might just add vocab. We can determine how many points that's worth, uh, one to 10. So we'll just leave that as five. And then we'll just add one more criteria here. 
So you do have up to five different slots uh, for the criteria. And then the last step here would be the time limitations. So again, extempore, it means spontaneous in Latin. And these time limitations are how you're accomplishing that so that students are responding uh, spontaneously to your questions. So you do have the ability to override these limitations per question. So I'm gonna leave these at the default from this uh, assessment level. That way I can show what an untimed question looks like compared to a timed question all within a single assignment. So limiting the time to review, that relates to how long the student can see the question uh, before they automatically need to begin their response. Limiting their time to respond, that's setting a maximum recording length. So if you do leave that as no, uh, students can record for however long they would like. And then the last step here is we're either allowing them to re-record for practice. Otherwise, if we say no, then the expectation is that it's just a single attempt uh, for this question. So we're going to hit next, and that's going to bring us to step number three uh, to start adding our questions. Now, I do see a lot of teachers creating a single question assessment, which is absolutely fine. Um, and we do recommend kind of starting simple, ramping up from there, because the last thing you want to do is have 10 speaking questions for 20 students, and then you have 200 um, audio clips to listen to. So for, for this example, I am going to create four different questions. And I'm going to use a kind of a variation of uh, media prompts and timers so everyone can see the different types here. So first we'll just say Q1, watch and respond. And then I'm going to use the video recorder to record an authentic video. Um, and this will just be, be a simple icebreaker question for students. Hey students, we'll be using Extempore this semester. Please introduce yourself in your native language and explain how you learn best. So we'll stop and use that video. And then at the bottom here, this is where we could override limitations, but I'm just going to leave that one as uh, untimed multiple attempts. So we'll just save and add another question. Now for Q2, I'm going to upload an image um, while also recording some audio uh, and making this a picture describing task. So we'll just say, listen and respond. And then we're gonna upload an image. Now, when it does say upload, that could be any existing image, video, or audio file that is saved to your computer, where the video and audio buttons here, that relates to you recording something on the spot. So that's what we're gonna do now, is I'm gonna open the audio recorder and we'll combine some audio with this image. So please tell me who Mariana is speaking with and who Juana is speaking with and go into detail on what those two individuals are wearing. So we'll use that audio. And then I, I'm gonna override the limitations for this. So one thing to note with the time to review is whenever there's a video or audio for the prompt, then the time to review is basically anchoring on that video or audio. So for this example, I'm gonna give students 15 seconds after they've listened to this entire clip uh, before they need to begin their response. I'm going to limit their maximum recording to one minute, and I'm not going to allow them to re-record a second time for this question. So now we'll just save and add another. Now for this one, I'm going to do the same exact limitations, but I'm not going to include an audio or video uh, so that everyone can see how that timer would function differently. So we'll just say Q3. And then the example I like to give here would be if maybe you did a vocabulary lesson earlier in the week, and now you want students to start forming sentences using that vocabulary. So we'll just say form a sentence using the vocab below. I'll get some dummy text. And then we'll override those limitations again to set them exactly what we had the previous question. So we'll say 15 seconds to review, one minute to respond, and we're not going to allow the student to re-record. So now we'll just save and add one more question. Now for this last one, I'm going to make it multiple choice. And you can do so just by checking the box for any question, regardless of what type of responses you're collecting. So for this assessment, it is all audio responses. But now this one question, of course, will be multiple choice. So one thing that is unique in terms of multiple choice with extempore is when you add the options for students, you'll have the same ability to add text, upload, video, or audio. 
So you might have a bunch of different audio or video clips in which case it's, in which case it's more of a listening comprehension uh, type of exercise, or you might just make it true or false. Um, but I'll give just a quick example here. So we'll just say, what will the weather be like this weekend? And then for multiple choice, it's not gonna follow the rubric uh, because you will determine what the correct answer is so that it can grade itself automatically. So we'll just say this is worth one point and then we'll add our choices. So now this is where you could include those different audio or video. Uh, for this example, I'm just gonna do three different images. So we'll just say rainy is the first option. We'll save that. And then we'll add our second option, which is cloudy. Save that choice. And then the last option here will be sunny. I am gonna say that is the correct answer in hopes that is the case. So we'll save that final choice. And now that I have all four questions, I'm not gonna add any more. So we'll just hit next. And then that is gonna bring us back to our class page. So we've named this class beginner's guide to extempore. And every time you have a class, you'll have a unique link, uh, which is what you'll share with students to get them enrolled. So I'm gonna copy that. We'll open that up real quick. So once shared with students, they're gonna see which class they're enrolling in uh, based on how you've named this class. And then they'll just create their new account. Uh, students can either sign in with Google, with Apple, or they can just fill out the form on the right-hand side uh, so that they have a username and password to log into moving forward. So coming back in to this instructor account now, there's never a need for you as a teacher to create a student account using that link because you're always gonna have this ability to view as a student uh, and run a quick test here. So before I do view as a student, I'm gonna pause. Uh, Thomas, are there any questions in the chat worth addressing? Uh, nothing at this point. If anybody has any questions at this point, let us know. Um, otherwise, we'll continue on. Yes. So, so we'll come in and view as a student here, and then I'll pause once we get through this uh, before we jump into the grading and feedback. Okay. So we'll just view as a student. That's going to open a new tab uh, with the student portal. And now this would be an example of a student was enrolled in two different classes. I'm sure most of your students will probably just be enrolled in one class. So they would just easily navigate there. And then they will have the different tabs at the top. So whatever is active will display here based on the due dates, uh, whatever is past due, and then completed would be uh, kind of their portfolio of work to review grades, feedback, and submissions. So we'll open up our first assignment. Now we have our four questions. So we'll open number one. And now we have as much time as we need for this one. So we'll just play the video. Okay, students will be using Extempore this semester. Please introduce yourself in your native language and explain how you learn best. Okay, so now we'll just hit record. My name is Sam Slagle. I learn best through visual aids. So now we'll stop. For multiple attempts, the student can listen back. They can re-record if they want to do a better version. Otherwise, they're just submitting that through the mail. So we'll submit. And now question two, this will be the first example of a lockable single attempt question. So we try to make sure uh, that this is very clear to uh, students that this is a lockable question, how much time to review and respond they will have. So once a student does say okay for a lockable question, they, they are locked in. So if they do try to back out, they're gonna get another warning letting them know they're about to get locked out. If they do proceed, um, what are, what we're thinking is that student basically saw the, the question contents and now they're trying to cheat the system and look up an answer. So that's kind of the reason for locking them out of a single attempt if they've seen the question and do not respond. You do have the ability as a teacher to unlock uh, to allow the student to get back in. So we'll cancel. And then for this one, uh, the time to review again is anchoring on this audio prompt. So as soon as I hit play here, you'll notice how all the controls get disabled so the student cannot pause, rewind, or replay uh, this audio prompt. So please tell me who Mariana is speaking with and who Juana is speaking with and go into detail on what those two individuals are wearing. Okay, so now that 15 second timer begins, 
So this is where students do tend to get a little more nervous because they don't have time to go look up an answer or phone a friend. And then as soon as this timer hits zero, uh, there's always a three second buffer before the recording just begins automatically on the left hand side. So Mariana is speaking with Edith. Juana is speaking with Omar. Edith is wearing a white shirt with a black sweater. Omar is wearing a green t-shirt with a white sweater around his neck. So now we'll stop. The student can still listen back uh, to the response, but now they no longer have that ability to re-record because we did determine single attempt for this one. So now we'll just submit. And then question three, again, has the same exact limitations, but there are there is no video or audio uh, for the prompt for this example. So we'll say, okay. Now the time to review begins immediately. So that might have been a reason to extend the time to review for this type of question. And if students don't want to, they don't need to wait for this to end. They can hit record when it is ready. And then we'll just form a sentence using the vocabulary on the list. Stop and submit. And now question number four is the multiple choice question. And it does uh, randomly organize the options for students, which if you are including a bunch of different images, I'd say it's not that handy because a student could tell another student that Sunny was the correct answer. But if you were doing a bunch of different video clips or audio clips, um, it makes it very challenging for the student to relay what the correct answer was just because answer number one or option one was correct for one student does not mean that's correct for all students. So we'll just submit that. Now the student gets a congratulations. So they come back to their activities and it has now moved this assessment to our completed folder. Once the grades and feedback are provided, this will turn green so that students know uh, it's ready to be reviewed. So I'll pause again. Um, Thomas, any questions in the chat before we go to grading and feedback? Yeah, uh, first one would be, can you use Google Classroom? So the team is just finishing up uh, our integration with Google Classroom. Uh, so it's not live yet, but it will be very shortly. Um, and then what comes with that is there'll just be a sync to Google Classroom button uh, within your account. And by doing so, it will actually create all the classes from your Google Classroom on extempore, and it will roster all the students at, at the same time. So I'd say if you're new to extempore, that'll be nice. Otherwise, for a lot of our current users, it's probably something they're gonna wanna start using uh, for next school year, since a lot of them already have classes and, and students enrolled. And then on the same lines, is there an integration with Canvas? <laughs> yes, yes. So we do integrate um, with Canvas and quite a few other LMSs. So I'm just going to open our, our website here for a quick reference. And then anyone else can go and locate this information as well. So currently, uh, we integrate with Canvas, Blackboard, Schoology, Moodle, uh, D2L, Blackboard, and Talent LMS. So again, Google Classroom, that's still in the works, but should be finished pretty shortly. And then uh, next school year, Clever uh, would be another integration to expect as well. Um, and then Debbie was asking, you know, at the end, can we go back and just go over the first part? She was late. I'm sure we can. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's no problem at all. Uh, is there an integration with Schoology? Yes. Um, is there a limitation in the number of students? No, so there's no limitation in terms of number of students, uh, questions, assessments. That, that is all unlimited. Um, another one. Um, one can use these activities for practice purposes to increase fluency and automatically by just leaving the grading function turned off, correct? So you don't have to grade and provide feedback. Right, you, you do not. Um, I, I was looking at one of our power users. Uh, she, she has more questions than most of our users, but I, I went in and looked. She is not grading, giving feedback. So she's really just getting her students to speak more, um, which is pretty cool to see because I mean, she's upwards of a thousand submissions from students. Um, and then we got another one, and then I think we'll just have to shift back to the presentation, and then we can mm -hmm. hold off for questions again at the end. But can you generate reports from extempore? Um, so I guess it depends on what kind of report exactly. Um, you do have a, a grade book, so so we, you do have reporting that's displaying just on the grades per assessment. Um, but I guess I need to know kind of how granular 
you're hoping to get those reports because I'd say right now that's really the extent of it. Um, it is that great book report. Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so um, what we'll do next, everyone, is we're going to go to grading, give some grades and feedback to everything we just responded to. Um, and then I'll, I'll pause for, for more questions once we get through this step here. So we're just going to go to grading at the very top. And then I'm just going to apply the filter with all my classes just to, to give a quick example here. Oh, I'm logged into too many accounts. Let me log out here. There we go. So on the grading tab at the very top here in red, this would be an example if a student would get locked out of a single attempt. So we try to surface those to the very top here uh, before you move on and start grading and giving feedback to anyone else. So you can either reset to allow the student to redo or you can hide and you should not give the student credit. And again, the only way a student can get locked out is if it was a single attempt and then they opened the question without submitting a response. I'd say the one valid reason that could potentially happen is if uh, the internet drops for the student and that could result in a locked attempt. Otherwise, more often than not, it's students trying to cheat the system uh, or students just not being aware of how these function. Because we will have some teachers that create their first assessment with very short timers and students just aren't familiar with how those work. So next, I'm just gonna filter to our beginner's guide to extemporary class. That's gonna snap our one assignment to the top. And then we can come into view. And then there's two options to format the grading here. So right now I'm grading by question. And this is what most do prefer to grade with. Um, that way you're seeing question one, all students who have responded to question one and grading them at the same time. Otherwise, the other option is to flip it by student, uh, which I am gonna do for, for this, just because I have a single student, a little easier to go through my four questions indented below. So from here, we can view the prompt for a quick refresher on what the question was. Otherwise, we're just listening to the student. My name is Sam Slagle. I learn best through visual aids. Okay. And then based on the rubric that we've inputted, uh, we'll give a quick grade. Right below that, you can provide written feedback, audio feedback, or video feedback as well. I'll do that for question number two. So we'll just submit and go to the next. We'll play this one back. So Mariana is speaking with Edith. Juana is speaking with Omar. Edith is wearing a white shirt with a black sweater. Omar is wearing a green t-shirt with a white sweater around his neck. And then for both um, video and audio uh, attempts from students, you can speed up the playback. I do speak pretty quickly as is, so I'll just give a quick example at 1.4 times, um, but we do retain the tone of voice for students, so they aren't sounding like a chipmunk when you can speed this up. So Mariana is speaking with Edith, Juana is speaking with Omar. Edith is wearing a white shirt with a black sweater. Omar's wearing a green t-shirt with a white sweater around his neck. So a nice little efficiency there. And then we'll just provide another grade on this one. Give some feedback to say good work. And then I'm gonna provide some audio feedback for this one. So with Extempore, there's two ways to give feedback. Uh, the first that everyone's familiar with would just be click record, give your feedback, and then use that audio. The other option is to actually insert your feedback in line uh, with the student's response. So all you need to do for that is just start recording feedback, play the student, so Mariana is speaking with Edith, Juana is speaking with Omar. Now I'm gonna pause it right here, and now I can let the student know if they just mispronounced a word or anything else that we wanna mention, and then I'll just resume their response. Edith is wearing a white shirt with a black sweater. Omar is wearing a green t-shirt with a white sweater around his neck. Okay. So we are still giving feedback, so we'll leave our closing remarks, and then we'll just stop this recording. So we'll use that audio and then I'll play that back for everyone from the student's perspective uh, after we get through uh, grading the last question here. So we'll just submit and go to the next. Now for this one, um, I am gonna give some video feedback and you can do it exactly how we just provided the audio feedback as well. So it almost makes it more interactive for the students since they're seeing a video of you listening to their response 
uh, while giving that feedback. So we'll just start recording. We'll play the audio. And then we'll just form a sentence using the vocabulary on the list. Okay, so that was a pretty short one, but now we'll just leave our feedback so that we know they're listening to the response again and then hearing our feedback at the end. So we'll use that video. And then we'll just give another quick grade on this one and we'll submit. So question number four, that was the multiple choice question. Uh, so that one has graded itself automatically and there's no further action. So on the left now, we can see that all of these have been published. They are all graded. So we know we can move on uh, to our next task. So I'll, I'll pause it. Tom's any questions before we flip it back to the student view um, to show what the grades and feedback looks like? Uh, not at this point. Do we want to hold off or just wait in case people have some questions? Um, no, I think let's keep moving. and I'll, I'll pause again after we uh, get through the reviewing here. All right. So to now I'm just going to navigate back to my tab here with the students view We'll refresh the page. And now student can see that their score uh, displays here in green, meaning they can come into review. So once we click in all the tiles for the questions are greened out as well. I'm just going to jump right to number two. And then the student has the question and their submission on the left hand side. Any grades or feedback from you uh, would be located on the right hand side. So this is where the inline feedback uh, would be located. And then I'll play this back as an example. Start recording feedback, play the student. So Mariana is speaking with Edith. Juana is speaking with Omar. Now I'm gonna pause it right here. And now I can let the student know if they just mispronounced a word or anything else that we wanna mention. And then I'll just resume the response. Edith is wearing a white shirt with a black sweater. Omar is wearing a green t-shirt with a white sweater around his neck. Okay, so we are still giving feedback. So we'll leave our closing remarks and then we'll just stop this recording. Okay, so that's what that would look like as they review. And then I'm gonna jump to number three here as well. Um, so very similar, but now the student has our video feedback to review here. We'll just start recording. We'll play the audio and then we'll just form a sentence using the vocabulary on the list. Okay, so that was a pretty short one, but now we'll just leave our feedback so that we know they're listening to the response again and then hearing our feedback at the end. Okay. So that's what that would look like for students. And then they're always just landing right back on our, our student portal here. So I know with some other systems, you're sharing a unique link uh, per assignment that you have available. Uh, with Extempore, it's a little bit different where they just have their Extempore student sport portal space and that's all they need to log into. Uh, once they log in, they'll see what's active, what's past due, which currently those are the two ones that they can be completing. Otherwise, they're just reviewing anything that has been completed here. Um, now, anyone who does use our LMS integrations or Google Classroom integration, once that is here, then there will be a specific link that gets posted on the LMS or on Google Classroom. So students are opening up a uh, direct assignment in that case. Do we have pause again? Yep, we have a couple of questions now coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, the first, uh, can you see if a student has reviewed the instructor's feedback? Currently, no. Um, it, there is not that much insight to know that they've seen the feedback. Um, you can notify them when feedback is available. Yes. Um, so that is one helpful thing. Uh, the next question would be, Perhaps you will address this later, but where would a student see feedback, see the feedback I've given when I've deleted a student's response when it hasn't been done correctly? Oh, there yeah. good, good question. And that's actually a good pivot here. So, so there might be a situation um, where a student starts recording for a few seconds and you probably want them to redo because uh, they, they didn't really complete the task. So in that case, you can just click on the trash icon here. And then this is where you'll have that ability to notify the student that the submission has been deleted, and you can provide an optional note uh, that will be emailed out to them as well. Any other questions, Thomas? Um, not this point. Okay. All right. So I'm going to cancel out of this.
and then um, just kind of talking through uh, some of the best practices here. So we're just going to click back to our, our classes. So we have our beginner's guide to extempore at the bottom here. So the way to look at extempore, it's kind of like a Russian doll. So you, your, your classes would be your big doll. And then when you open up those classes, your assessments would be the smaller doll. Um, and then when you open those, you have your questions. So the reason to look at it like that is right now we're viewing our classes. We can copy a class, which then all of the assessments inside of it would be copied over as well. So that's generally something you would be doing year to year or semester to semester if you do want to retain anything you've created and then use that uh, with new students for that following semester or school year. Right next to that is our send a colleague uh, option. So when we click that share icon, you can, the link here is the one you're sharing with students. The one below is what you can send to a colleague if you want your colleague to be able to copy your class and assignments into their account. So now when we open up that big doll, which is the classes, so I'll click here. Now we would have all of our smaller dolls uh, in terms of the assessments. And you can see here that you have the same exact icons. So rather than copying a class with all assessments, now I can just copy a single assessment and choose which one of my classes I would like to add that to. And then same exact thing here with the ability to send this assessment to a colleague and then they can just choose which one of their classes uh, they would like to add that one to. So we'll close out of that. At the very bottom of the page here, uh, because we did use the view a student option, we can see our test student has populated down below here. Um, as your students enroll using the class link, this is where you'll see the rest of the list uh, fill up for the roster. And then if a student ever forgets a password, for example, you can always just click on the little gear icon. You can provide a new password on the spot to let them get back in. Students can always do forgot password and have it reset themselves as well. So this is kind of just a nice little mini IT feature if needed. <clears throat> the other option down here is the little eye icon. What that does is it actually allows you to log in directly to any of your students' accounts. So viewing as a student is one thing uh, from your own account. Otherwise, you can view as a specific student to see their completed work. Maybe a student tells you that this assignment isn't showing on their active tab. Now you can just do a quick check and confirm that you're seeing uh, exactly what they're seeing and that it is showing up or it is not. So nice for uh, troubleshooting there. Let's see, otherwise, we do have the gradebook here. So gradebook, it's just a consolidated view of all the assignments, uh, all the students and grades. So we just filter to our beginner's guide to extempore. That's gonna snap our one student and the one assignment that we completed uh, to the top here. So, and then these can be exported out to Excel. Now, other than that, um, just gonna to touch on a few things from the account in the top right. So my account, that really just relates to if you have a trial or paid account. You do have the ability to upload a roster uh, via spreadsheet if you would like. I, I would say 95%, if not more, uh, end up just sharing the class link, kind of putting that work on the student so that students are just more aware that they created an account and usually they're create, um, completing the first assessment at the same time. Um, profile, so if you need to update a username, password, or email address. And then you do have the ability to add a teaching assistant to your account if you would like somebody to help with grading or uh, creating any of the content or assessment. Uh, preferences, so I'm going to click into this one. So you will notice enable uh, Google Classroom is here. It, it's not yet live, so that's just showing on my account. Uh, we will have an announcement once that gets launched for everyone. So enable safe mode. Uh, I do want to talk on this one because it does do uh, a few things for the account. And it's really just if you're ever concerned about the integrity of the contents or uh, the assignments or assessments that you created. So once uh, safe mode is enabled, students it disables students' ability to download any video or audio uh, from the prompt. And then by default, as I mentioned for written responses, students can never copy and paste text into the text box. But then if safe mode is turned off, students could potentially copy the text that you've inputted from the prompt 
and then try to open that up in Google Translate. So by enabling safe mode, they cannot even copy uh, text out of our system to then paste it onto something like Google Translate. And then the third thing that this is doing um, is that it's disabling the future assessments tab for students. And this is kind of a weird one. About two months ago, we had a student find a way to change the time zone on their computer so that they could access something that was in the future and they should not be able to access yet. Now that student got caught right away because they submitted before the start time. Um, but that is something we've kind of tied into this safe mode. Just the idea being they don't know it's upcoming. They don't know to take that type of action to change the time zone. And then um, I, I mentioned this earlier on. So the, the new option that will be added to here in the next two weeks will be a yes, no toggle. Uh, to either accept late work or not accept late work. So currently, uh, all late work is accepted, but it is labeled in red as late so that you can handle those grades accordingly. Next then would be the email notification preferences. So these are all enabled for your students by default. And if you do want them to be receiving the notifications, you'll just wanna make sure you do turn those on uh, from your account as well. And then if anybody does teach a right to left language, you can choose which one of your classes that relates to. And then any text for both teacher and students uh, will then display right to left rather than uh, the default of left to right. So other than that, archived classes, um, that's just if you archive a class year to year, you can always recover the contents of the class. The one thing that cannot be recovered once archived is the student submissions um, and really just the students themselves. So the idea of archiving is just to keep your account clean from year to year. And when you're really done working with that group of students would be the time to do something like that. You can access our help center uh, right from the link here. Otherwise, in this little bubble at the bottom, this would be another way to just access our, our help center quickly. And you can view the help articles right in line with your account so that you never need to leave the page uh, when you're searching for those here. Do have our first question at this point um, regarding kind of the sign up flow for students. So do students supply their email addresses when they sign up for the class? Yes, yes. So and let me go back to that one here. So once the class is created, we can just grab the share link. So we'll copy that. And then let me open that one up in a new tab. So once shared with students, they're going to see which class they're enrolling with based on how you've labeled it. They'll create their new account. And then they're either providing name, email, username, and password, or they're just signing with Google or Apple. Um, but all of those, of course, are associated to an email address. And then do you want to go on the alternative if they don't necessarily have emails? Um, Yes, so if students do not have emails, and that's generally if it's uh, younger learners, um, so we do not require that it is a unique email for students. And if, if that is the case, that, that is where we would recommend doing a import of the roster. Um, so I'll share while I'm talking. So again, that would be right here to upload your roster. And you could use just a, a dummy email or you can use your uh, instructor email then for all students. And at that point, really all you're trying to do here is you're producing a username and password for students so that you can provide them uh, the username and password to get in moving forward. Any other questions, Thomas? Uh, no, and here we're kind of reaching the end. So this is where I just wanted to open up to kind of a free discussion on any other comments while those come in do you mind just showing what it looks like to set up your your class and like a quick assessment again for i think it was debbie that asked and so while we do that everyone feel free if you have any questions about anything let us know um, i will put in the link to uh, the webinar series page again if you are interested in the upcoming other sessions happening Feel free to take a look at that. Debbie and anyone else is still following along on my screen. So when you're creating a class, it's just dropping you in these three steps here. So you're creating your class, 
next step is creating your assignment. Um, and I believe that's going to when you had joined as well. So from here, we're just setting up due dates, whether it's individual or group. Um, again, for anyone who missed it, I, I will be diving quite a bit deeper on the groups uh, during my Friday webinar. And we, we did um, recently, it's, um, it's in beta currently. So the synchronous groups, um, that's another thing I'll be sharing if anyone's uh, interested in that. So with those synchronous groups, it's, it's basically Zoom breakout rooms, but it all happens on extempore. And each one of those groups uh, of students two to four uh, automatically gets recorded for you to then grade and provide feedback later on. But I'm not gonna go too far into that right now because we'll be diving quite a bit deeper on Friday on that one. Yeah, and quick interject here. So uh, Maria was asking if students have the ability to log in with Google. Yes, that there is Google single sign-on. Uh, Debbie again here, uh, will we be able to access this video? I did get number two, but how to create a class? How, but how do you create a class number one? So really it's just putting in a name and that's it for number one. Yeah. Uh, there's really not much to it. Um, we will be uh, sending out the recordings throughout the week. Um, that link that I posted, that landing page, the where you signed up for everything, uh, as webinars conclude, uh, I will be posting the recording on there and then we'll be emailing everybody on Friday or Monday, whenever I get to it uh, with the announcement that everything's ready. Mm -hmm. uh, Mercedes, yes. Uh, if you go to that link that I posted, just click. Um, there are a couple of spots still remaining, um, but that one is happening tomorrow. So there's still some spots, yes. Yeah, and, and if anyone's having trouble attending that all the webinars happening this week, I do have uh, weekly lunch and learns every Tuesday and Thursday. So you can actually locate these right from your account in the little bubble here uh, if you want to enroll or register for either of those. Um, so I, I guess just as a whole, check out that little bottom bubble there um, because there, there are some importable tasks for everyone as well. So if you want to use some of the Avant uh, grab and go tasks that they've created on Extempore for seal of our literacy, those can be copied into your account. Otherwise, we do have a, a big list of 29 speaking activities for uh, Spanish, French, Chinese, and English uh, at the link here. Cool. Yeah, and I don't see I don't see anything else. So, um, if you do want to drop off at this point, since I don't think we have any more questions, there is going to be a survey that pops up. Um, if you don't mind filling out that, it's just really helpful for us to get feedback on what we should cover in the future and kind of overall where we can improve. So we can keep doing these to help everyone as much as we can. And if there are no other questions, thank you everyone for your time and for the questions that did come up throughout this. And then again, I guess, Sam, quickly, if you want to tease kind of your topics you want to go over for the advanced webinar on Friday. And then after that, I think we can just uh, end it there. Yes. Um, yeah. So for the advanced webinar, a majority of that time, again, is going to be focused on the different group functionality. So the, the group functionality we've always offered in the past has been just asynchronous, kind of like a, a discussion board for students. Uh, but then the, the new one that we just developed over the last month here, it, it is currently in beta, but that would be the, the synchronous groups and, and that ability to have students connect for a live conversation. Um, more similar to like a Zoom breakout room while actually capturing the recording. Because um, I, I guess that was the biggest complaint we were hearing is everyone loves Zoom breakout rooms, but the issue is you can't be in all of them at the same time. You can't record all of them at the same time. So, so that's kind of what we're, we're looking to solve next with this new feature. All right, yeah, I'm not seeing any more questions. So um, like I said, everyone, I'll post this link one more time. Um, if you are interested in the upcoming webinars, uh, Sam's on Friday, we're doing a webinar on using some for, for read alouds, dictations, free writes and student reflections, um, as well as incorporating authentic materials like podcasts while using extempore. So uh, a lot of interesting topics this week. Uh, if you can't make it, you can still register to make sure you get a recording. But like I said, I will be updating that that website page uh, as the week goes on with all the materials. So um, 
Uh, I think that's it, Sam. If <laughs> close remarks, we'll end it here. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Yes. Thank you, everybody. All right. I will.